This is Mrs. Mafucci, and right now we're going to consider the pressure exerted by gases. In our last video, we studied the relationship between temperature and volume. And in this video, we are going to consider the effect of temperature on pressure and volume on pressure. Pressure occurs when a force is dispersed over a given surface area. In other words, pressure equals force divided by area. Well, what happens if that force acts over a large area, like your weight on a pair of skis? In that case, the force, which is your weight, is divided by a very large area, which results in a small pressure which is why you can go fast down a hill. But what if the force acts over a small area, like the blades on a pair of ice skates? In that case, the same force, which is your weight, is distributed over a small area. In this case, a very, very large pressure results. And actually, when you're ice skating, you are melting the ice and you're actually ice skating on the melted ice. Now the pressure exerted by a gas is caused by collisions of the gas particles with the walls of the container. As the gas particles hit the walls of the container, pressure is exerted. The pressure depends on how hard and how often the gas particles strike the walls of the container. The harder they hit, and the more often they hit, the higher the pressure. There are four units of gas pressure used in chemistry. Atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, tor, and kilopascals. Standard pressure is defined as one atmosphere, 760 millimeters of mercury, 760 tor, and 101.3 kilopascals, which means they are equivalent to one another. One atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury, which equals 760 tor, which equals 101.3 kilopascals. These equalities can be used to create conversion factors, which you can use to solve problems. Now, the atmospheric pressure is caused by the force of gravity on atmospheric gases, such as nitrogen and oxygen and helium and other such gases. Atmospheric pressure is measured with a barometer. Notice the force of the atmosphere, the weight of the atmospheric gases pushing down on the mercury in the Petri dish. That force pushes the column of mercury up that glass tube. By measuring the height, you can determine the atmospheric pressure. Using a ruler, doesn't it make sense? We would give atmospheric pressure in terms of millimeters of mercury. One atmosphere, or 760 millimeters of mercury, is the normal atmospheric pressure at sea level. Let's consider the scientist Joseph Gay-Lussac. He was a French chemist and he was part of a scientific balloon flight to study the Earth's atmosphere. In his party, they collected samples of air from different altitude for analysis of the differences in temperature, pressure, and humidity. And these studies led to his interest in the relationship between temperature and pressure. In 1808, Gay-Lussac announced his discovery that the pressure exerted by a fixed mass of a gas at constant volume was directly proportional to the absolute temperature. In other words, as temperature increases, 
the pressure exerted by a gas increases in a proportional way. Take a look at the graph on the left. Notice that as the temperature increases, the pressure increases. This relationship can be shown in the following formula. P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. And remember, temperature must always be in Kelvin. The next scientist we're going to look at is Robert Boyle. He was an Irish philosopher, chemist, physicist, inventor, writer, and he's considered one of the founders of modern chemistry. While studying the compressibility of gases, he developed a principle that describes the relationship between pressure and volume. The pressure exerted by a fixed mass of a gas held at a constant temperature varies inversely with the volume of the gas. For example, if the volume is halved, the pressure is doubled. And if the volume is doubled, the pressure is halved. Take a look at the diagram. Notice the volume occupied by the gas when only one weight is on top of the piston. What about when there are four weights? Notice when there are eight weights. As the amount of pressure increases, the volume decreases. This is known as Boyle's Law and represents an inverse relationship. Pressure is inversely related to the volume. If a gas, which is made up of loosely spaced particles, is compressed in a container, these gas particles are pushed together. Therefore, the gas occupies less volume. These gas particles, having less space in which to move, hit the walls of the container more frequently and thus exert an increased pressure. Look at the diagram at the top. When you have high pressure, it means that the gas is occupying low volume. But when the pressure is low, the gas can occupy high volume. Consider the graph. As pressure increases, volume decreases. This is another diagram to show the relationship of Boyle's Law. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. When you decrease the volume, that increases the number of collisions between the gas particles and the walls of the container, and therefore the pressure increases.